Terrell Dodson has some really fun film. Hey, Twelves. Welcome in. Today I'm looking at one of the Seahawks' most recent signings, Terrell Dodson. Dodson entered the NFL undrafted out of Texas A&M, and after playing behind some excellent linebackers in Buffalo, he finally broke out in 2023. I'm sure that you've probably heard this by now because literally every article I've read mentions it, but he was PFF's highest graded overall linebacker last year. So let's jump into his tape. Dodson is going to be a menace on all the blitzes and stunts that Mike McDonald loves to run. Let's look at this play that highlights that in week 9 against the Bengals. Here the Bills are in a simple cover one man look, with the safety actually shaded towards the passing strength or really just shaded towards Jamar Chase to provide extra support. Dodson here is on a blitz as the Bills aim to bring 5 rushers. Before you correct me and tell me that the other linebacker, who in this case is Dorian Williams, is also rushing, he is actually in man coverage on the running back. In many blitz looks, particularly man blitz looks, whoever has someone who could add on to the protection, like this running back, he could you know, help in pass protection. Um, the linebacker in this case will use the green dog technique. This is a rule that says if your man assignment stays in a block, like we see in this clip, you actually need to blitz or add on to the pass rush because you no longer have someone to guard. This allows the defenders to regain the numbers that they want on the blitz and doesn't allow the offense to really do a good job of blocking it up. Here, however, Dodson decides that all of that doesn't really matter and he doesn't need the reinforcements. Faced with just the running back of Joe Mixon, Dodson seizes the opportunity and shows off his power to get the hit on Burrow. This almost leads to a pick. This shows off Dodson's speed and power, and is such an advantage when, as a defensive coordinator, you can trust your linebacker to win quickly against a running back. This next clip shows both the strengths and the weaknesses of how Dodson gets after the quarterback. Here, in the infamous game just this last year against the Chiefs, Dodson is set up in a similar pressure with five rushers and a cover one man look on the back end. Dodson creeps up to the line of scrimmage and basically lines up as the three tech on this play. Here we see one of the weaknesses in Dodson's passing game, where he doesn't really have enough power to beat guards one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think that this was an intentional stunt for him to loop around like he does. To me, this just looks like Dodson is freestyling. He knows that he can't just bull rush the guard by powering into him, so he looks for another way. Here he shows off one of his pass rushing strengths, however, because he's really good at ad-libbing to his pass rush and really getting after the quarterback as they start to escape the pocket. Dodson isn't the type of linebacker that you want blitzing every time, and he's definitely no Micah Parsons, but he is a useful player in design blitzes and stunts if you can scheme up a favorable matchup. I expect Mike McDonald to use him as a blitzer plenty, and he will be a very productive player getting after the quarterback when asked. So what about his run defense? Well, Dodson defends the run in a very similar way to how he rushes the passer. Let's look at this play from the same game against the Bengals, which shows how Dodson defends the run. The Bengals are running a pretty simple RPO, with the run call being GT counter. GT counter is a very simple and effective run play. The idea is that on the front side of the play, all of the down linemen will down block, taking the gap to their right in this case with the backside guard and tackle pulling to pave the way. For the backside edge here, the Bengals use the threat of the QB run game to take care of this player and effectively block him. Burrow is reading the edge, and if the edge crashes down to tackle the back, he will keep the ball. Here the backside edge does not crash down, which allows Burrow to hand it off. If we go back to the start of this play, we can see that the Bills seem to have a numbers advantage in the box for the run game. Counting just the players in the run fit or the players that the Bills have dedicated to stop the run, the Bills have four down linemen and two linebackers against the Bengals' five offensive linemen. This should be winning numbers for the Bills, but the read element of this play allows the Bengals to steal back the numbers advantage that they have, and now they basically have enough linemen for each Bills player with the edge being occupied. But here, Dodson does a great job of winning this rep, despite the Bills not being in a great spot to defend this. 
As you can see, the entirety of the left side of the bangles line goes gap down, and they leave the edge on the strong side for the pullers. On a chalkboard, the left guard would probably get off of his double team faster to get the backside linebacker, but that doesn't happen on this play. Still, the Bengals should be in a pretty good spot to get Mixon into space and give him a chance to pick up a solid gain. Jonah Williams, the right tackle for the Bengals, is coming around and hopes to be able to kick out Dodson to build the hole for the back, but he just isn't able to land the punch. Dodson does a great job of ducking underneath the blocker and getting the tackle for just a short gain. Dodson does not stop the run the same way that we have seen BWAG do in Seattle for about the past decade. Wagner is absurdly good at stacking and shedding for the tackle. Even if you get an offensive lineman on him, he still isn't out of the play because he's so good at disengaging to stay active. I'm not going to say that if you get a big guy on Dodson that he's useless because he's not, but this is definitely something that he's not going to build his entire run defense portfolio on the same way that Wagner has. On tape, there are definitely plenty of plays where he does a good job of engaging blockers and filling his assignment, but he primarily wins by going around blockers, not through them. In the Eagles game, Kelsey bullied him all day. As you can see on these plays, Dodson doesn't have the weight and play strength to hold up against Kelsey. I'm well aware that a Hall of Famer dominated you is really not a knock for a guy that you have on a cheap deal, but it's definitely something to be aware of. Stylistically, he's more of a gap shooter who needs to win with his athleticism and his speed than someone who thrives on engaging linemen and winning. The trade-off for this lack of play strength is, in my opinion, his high-end range. Range is a term usually used for safeties, like Earl Thomas had some of the best of all time, and it refers to how quickly you cover the entirety of the field, from sideline to sideline. But I would argue that Dodson brings range as a linebacker. I can't tell you how many times in watching this film he would be the backside pursuit guy to go make the play, beating the safety there. Let's look at this play to demonstrate this, with Dotson running nearly 30 yards to make the stop on this screen. When Burrow throws the screen, Dotson is at the far hash at about a 7 yard depth off the line of scrimmage. He not only is able to move fast enough, but takes the perfect angle to stop Mixon for just a 4 yard gain off this well blocked screen. Numerous times on tape, this guy was the guy who came in and was the cavalry and saved the day. This shows his pursuit speed, his high effort, and his great understanding of timing and angles to make these plays so consistently. This range is one of the things that I think the Seahawks have been lacking at linebacker with a declining Wagner and a young Brooks who is more of the thumper type of linebacker instead of the rangy guy. I can't wait to watch Dodson dismantle all of these wide zone runs that Shanahan loves with all of his athleticism. Linebacker coverage has been one of the many Achilles heels of the Seahawks defense recently. Dodson's coverage grade on PFF ranked third out of all qualifying linebackers in coverage. But I'm, I'm sorry, I just really don't see that on tape. Don't get me wrong, Dodson is a very capable coverage linebacker. He does an excellent job in his zone drops of feeling out routes behind him, and even has some highlight plays like this pass broken up or PBU against AJ Brown. He is absolutely a plus coverage linebacker, and when complemented with his run defense, that makes him a really complete player. But I just don't see an elite coverage linebacker. I don't mean to start a war in the comments or get a bunch of you unsubscribing, so I am going to keep my comments brief, at least for this video. The accuracy of PFF grades varies by position, even they will tell you that, and linebacker in my opinion is not graded very well. It is difficult to factor in what linebackers were asked to do on the play when grading them. The role of a linebacker in coverage ranges from buzzing to the flat, which is generally pretty easy and honestly doesn't take that much coverage skill at all, to playing man coverage with no help on Travis Kelsey. These are two completely different roles, and it makes it hard to compare someone who is good at simple zone drops to someone who often gets beat by Kelsey one-on-one. -on -one. I would probably say that the linebacker who is guarding the all-pro tight end is probably better because holding up in that situation at all is pretty impressive, but all of the times that that player gets beat would hurt their PFF grade and potentially make them grade worse than a player who wasn't asked to do anything difficult. I hope that makes sense. So to me, Dodson isn't actually an elite coverage linebacker because the Bills didn't ask him to do that much. 
When the Bills were defending on an obvious passing down, they would sometimes go into their dime package, which has just one linebacker and six defensive backs. And when they went to that dime package, Dodson rotated off of the field and they had Terrell Bernard stay in. You wouldn't sub out an elite coverage linebacker on a coverage down unless you think that he's not really elite. What the Bills asked Dotson to do, he did really well, and I don't know if I saw that many plays on tape where he made a mistake, but he really wasn't asked to do a ton. His responsibilities were pretty much guarding the hook curl zone or guarding the flat. I admit that Dotson was excellent at doing this, but I didn't see any plays on tape where he seemed to be an elite player who is going to be a game changer on the back end. Please don't misunderstand me because I'm really excited for what Dodson brings in each of these three facets of being a linebacker. And I want to make something very clear and I think a point that needs to be said in the today's modern NFL. There is no longer such a thing as a perfect linebacker. Like, let's think about it. In order to be the ideal linebacker, you need to be fast and agile enough to keep up with slot receivers in your zone and shut them down. But somehow you also need to be big enough to blow up guards on your way to tackling Derrick Henry. That is two completely different jobs. Linebackers are no longer these run-stuffing thumpers because those guys would get exposed in coverage. And the quicker, lighter, safety-type molds of linebackers don't work either because they get thrown out of the club by all these guards who weigh over 300 pounds. Yes, there are linebackers who can do a good job at both of these roles, but there's always going to be downsides to the mold that you want your linebackers to bring, and you need to make compromises. For example, Cam Chancellor was listed at 232 pounds. Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith, Mike McDonald's linebackers last year, weighed 229 pounds and 234 pounds, respectively. The linebacker position has moved in favor of lighter and faster players, such as Terrell Dodson, who can try their best to do it all. And this is what I'm most excited for. The modern NFL linebacker is by definition a tweener who tries to be athletic enough to keep up with the quick guys and tenacious enough to battle with the hog mollies inside of the box. Dodson to me is an excellent blend of all three of these facets that we have discussed, and I think that is what I'm really excited for. He will continue to be a high-level player, and he is a great fit for what Mike McDonald wants. While I would have loved for this deal to be a little bit longer, because I think this is just a very good player, one year for about $5 million is an absolute steal for a modern linebacker with this much versatility. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what player you want me to break down next. I think my next video will probably be a free agent grading video where I go through the film of all of these guys that the Hawks have gotten and talk about their strengths and give the signing a grade. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss that. And I really appreciate it. Go Hawks.